The big advantage that completing the square has over factorization is plainly sometimes you just can't factorize, right? Like, how, how long are you going to sit there trying to guess like thirds and stuff like that? It's not going to happen. So completing the square just gets those out effortlessly, which is really nice. There was one other thing I showed you how to do. Do you remember? It had to do, it had to do with this guy. What can we do with this? How is completing the square relevant to them? You can find the center, you can find the radius. When it's some expanded mess of terms, if you complete the square, you can get it factorized and off you go. Okay? So we're going to look at two more things that you can do with completing the square. First, the formula. Now, we know the formula. Right? The formula for solving a quadratic equation is x equals minus b plus or minus yada yada yada. And it comes from completing the square. Okay? Now, it wouldn't be very likely that you'd be actually asked to derive the quadratic formula. However, what would be likely is you're asked to use all the same skills that deriving it would. So, let's quickly revive this because um, we've seen this before. We have, right. So, I need you to help me. Have a look. non monic quadratic. So, the first thing I need to do to use this technique is... Divided by A to turn it into a monic quadratic. That gives us this. Okay, is this ringing bells? I can now take, oops, sorry, I can now take this guy. I don't need him, do I? He's going to go over the right hand side. Because what I'm really interested in is making the square out of this guy. Like so. Okay, at this point is where I do the completion of the square. What am I going to add on? Hmm. <coughs> You're looking at which number? Which number? B on A. And you do two things to it. You halve and square. Halve and square. Halve and square. Okay. So when I halve it, I get B on 2A. And then when you square that, B on 2A, you get B squared on 4A squared. Okay. So I've successfully completed the square, which means I should make sure I do this on both sides like so. Uh, now I can actually factorize this left-hand thing. So, what are the factors? You remember you halved and squared it to get this, but to get this you just you just do the halving part, right? So this is b on 2a. That should look familiar, right? That looks familiar. As we go through, you're like, oh, I recognize these structures. Like, for example, over here, you've got two fractions. I'd prefer to write them as one. So what will I do? What am I going to do with this guy? I'll multiply by 4a on 4a. Oh, yeah, that's right. That looks familiar, doesn't it? Right? Plus b squared. OK, so far so good. What squared? Oh, thank you. Yep. I did complete the square after all. Okay, um, now what am I going to do? I, I, I don't want this squared thing. I want the x on its own. So I will take the square to both sides. I know when I do that, that that introduces a pair of solutions, right? It's not just the square root of this thing, b squared minus 4ac on 4a squared. It's not just that square root, it's also the negative version of that. Yes? Looking good? We're almost there. We're not far. I'm going to get rid of this guy. So what do I do? I will subtract. While I'm at it, I see I can do some work here. Because look, 4a squared is itself a perfect square. So I can take the square root of that. That gives me this. And from now on, your memory should sort of take over, right? The next line is the quadratic formula. Okay? Now, I'm not going to write it um, because you know it well enough. And also because this form of writing it actually highlights a useful feature that I want to talk about. This guy. What is that? It's not quite the, on, the, on its own first we get the axis of symmetry from which we can find the vertex, right? Why is it that this is the axis of symmetry? What makes this the axis of symmetry? <coughs> Excuse me. When you use the quadratic formula and it gives you two numbers at the end, like say 1 and 5, um, what are those numbers? What do they mean? What are 1 and 5? They are the 
They're the, ze the zeros, right? The roots. Well, the axis of symmetry is directly halfway between wherever your roots are, yeah? So that's why it's like from your axis, you go to the right a little bit, and then you go to the left a little bit, and that'll give you your roots. Say that again. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll come to that. I promise. Okay? We'll come back to this point. So, number one, that's where we get that from, and you're going to be using that copiously today. There's one other thing, and it's what uh, Jake was mentioning before, which is about uh, not solving equations, but finding the vertex. So when you draw a quadratic uh, function, what shape do you get? When you draw a quadratic, you get a parabola, right? So the vertex is an important feature of that parabola. Now, looking at what's on the board, how could you use what's on the board to find the vertex? What would you do? Yep, you'd take this number, right? And then you'd sub it back into whatever your thing was, and then you'll get a y value, okay? But completing the square can get you there directly rather than go to the formula and then do this other thing. Watch. Let's consider um, something like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a thing like this. OK. Now, <coughs> excuse me. The reason why I'm highlighting this guy is because there's an important feature about it that will become clear as soon as we start to go through. Okay, How do I find the vertex of this? I can, and this is totally fine, I can find the axis of symmetry, take that x value, and pop it back inside. But completing the square can do that for us on its own. Just like for this guy, it can find, circles don't have a vertex, what do they have? The center. It's exactly the same process. Watch. To complete the square here, um, I needed to make things monic. Do I need to do that? Looks OK right now. So I've given you nice, easy numbers. Okay. What did I do here? How, how did this guy get over here? Or more importantly, why did it get over there? Yeah, I, I don't need that constant around. The completion of the square totally depends on this guy. Does that make sense? So for this question, what's the part that's important? Hey, very good. x squared plus 5x is where the business is going to happen. So therefore, I'm just going to isolate that and get the 9 out of the way. Like so. Happy with that? Now let's complete the square. Um, you've got y minus 9 over here. Here's the number where all the action is, so I'm going to halve and square. When you do that, halving it gives you 2 and a half. Squaring 2 and a half gives you 6 and a quarter. Of course, your calculator can confirm that for you if you like. You add it to the right, which means, which means you should add it to the left, like so. Everything's all balanced. And now I can factorize, right? Uh, let's tidy this guy up. Uh, 6 and a quarter minus 9 is 2 and 3 quarters, like so. The right-hand side is now a square because I completed it, OK? Uh, what's it the square of? OK. Now, remember back when we were talking about real functions. And I said, if you have some kind of function like this, and you know exactly what it looks like, then you should be able to tell me what this is. Right? What's going to be the difference between these two? It's been shifted, translated. Which way has it translated? To the left, very good, two and a half units. OK? Well, that's what's happened here. Isn't it? If you knew what x squared looked like, well, this is like x squared, but shifted to the left, two and a half units. So if you just take a regular parabola, where's the vertex? It's at 0, 0. But this one has been shifted two and a half units to the left. So where is it now? It's two and a half to the left, isn't it? And accordingly, what's happened vertically Where's this gone? It's gone up two and three quarters. Okay. Does that make sense? See why I've done this? Um, what's nice about this is you can find the vertex without ever having to like, solve this thing. You can't solve this. There are no real roots. Okay? Um, because as you can see, this is too far above the axis. It'll actually never come back. 
Okay? 